<laughs> so I've just shown all our live stream viewers that lovely drawing you did on your Twitter feed. Thank you for putting that up this morning for all the fans, really. It's brilliant that you got it out so quickly. The first question that came in is obvious, an obvious one. You know, will this benefit one team more than another, these changes for 2023? I don't know what your thoughts are on that. Uh, I think it's going to affect every team. Um, as much as some people have been saying that, you know, um, porpoising and bouncing has been cured because you haven't seen it for the past two races, uh, I think that could change a lot at some of the upcoming tracks. So it, it's not cured. Um, equally, some teams have got slightly different concepts. So I think a lot of people are maybe comparing the Mercedes concept to the, the higher, slightly more raked Ferrari and Red Bull concepts. I think both will um, be affected equally in different ways by this regulation change so I don't think there's any real winners obvious winners or losers in this everyone's going to have to go back to the drawing board um, and see um, what they want to do I don't think you're necessarily going to see people making big changes to their concepts because of this um, you know in terms of the, the zero pod on the, on the Mercedes or the giant side pods on the Ferrari I think they'll just find different ways of dealing with it what do you think the teams will do from here on in, even at the French Grand Prix, in terms of preparing for where they might be in Belgium and, and what they have to live with in Belgium? Uh, it's very hard to say because, again, you know, as much as when we're now talking about all these different stiffness tests on the plank and on the floor, uh, we don't really know what each of the different teams are doing. I mean, everyone's sort of seeing these um, uh, technical directives at that, that the floor stiffness are pointing immediately at Ferrari and Red Bull, but that isn't necessarily the case. I mean, uh, I, I've seen flexing quite clearly evident on the Mercedes floor as well and all the other cars up and down the circuit. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to make any major changes to their cars. Uh, I think everyone uh, who potentially is employing some kind of flexibility uh, will uh, really just kind of follow um, what they've been doing and will take the arguments there. I don't think we're going to see anyone coming up with anything mechanically changed on their cars. I think the only caveat to sort of saying that is that there was um, an additional technical directive that looked at the skid blocks, which are the titanium metal blocks that go into the plank in the underfloor, some team had employed a device where it could actually push up into a slightly flexible floor underneath so that you neither had the plank wear or the skid block wear. Now, I don't know what team running that, what it, what it was. They will have to change their floor in that situation back to a more conventional skid block design. Sounds like, so, a, sounds like a movable aerodynamic device to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you probably could argue that, but that would be quite a convoluted argument um no i mean i think it's just you know someone's just found a different way and again we don't know how long teams have been running you know that kind of skid block because we've seen for what, probably almost a decade now with the high rank cars at the front of the floor and the skid block in the front of the floor you know is punished so if someone had that moving uh skid block that would have been an advantage for many years but obviously it's only just been detected mm. now mm. And yeah, that has to, you know, that, that practice has to stop. But again, I don't think we're going to see a massive change in teams' relative competitiveness or the amount that they'll be porpoising. So we could go to Belgium, you know, high speed circuit, quite a bumpy track, you know, quite a lot of changes in surfaces, a lot of changes in grading in the track. And we could see Ferrari porpoising uh, with a car that's exactly the same spec as it was racing you know, um, in Silverstone or in Austria. So I think it's going to be quite difficult to draw conclusions at Belgium. And then I think we go on to what, Hungary, um, which again is another circuit that could highlight a lot of porpoising. Monza, equally, very high speeds could highlight porpoising. So it's, it will be hard to, to draw um, conclusions. But again, I don't think there will be any obvious changes in performance or porpoising. Scarbs, point number two for next year, a raising of the underfloor diffuser throat. I notice they haven't actually said how they're going to do that and by how much and what curve it's going to be or whatever. I presume that's going to be a big discussion point between Adrian Newey and everybody else, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I think it's one of those things that, that there's two, effectively two geometry changes. So if you drew a line under the car on the, the current cars, you would have the flat bottom under the cockpit and then you go up into the diffuser throat which is the lowest section of the tunnel and then you would come down to the 
floor edge and the floor edge is at the same height as the underfoot side of the car so apart from the plank it's almost on the track and that is what's led to a lot of the sensitivity problems and again it's something that i felt quite odd when i read the regulations from last year i think raising the edge of the floor just makes lots of sense that you're not getting airflow stoppages from being too close to the track and if you see how close the Mercedes floor in particular runs to the track, you can see that you could have problems in airflow not getting out when it wants to get out and vice versa. The throat height, yeah, I think that's something they may need to go into CFD and just sit, understand exactly how much they lift, need to lift it up to reduce the kind of the sensitivity the car has to ride heights. But again, we are probably only talking about maybe like the floor edge 25 millimetres. It's um, you know very small amount. But they're going to need to define that pretty soon in terms of getting on with the design of next year's car, right? I mean, it's still a fundamental point of the whole ground effect issue. Yes, yeah, no, no, no doubt they mm. need. Um, I think there is a cut off. I can't remember if it's the end of September for the regulations for mm. the following year. So yes, they're going to need to mandate that. But again, they need to just understand what that is, and I'm sure that there's a. Uh, 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 furious CFD activity within the FIA now in looking at this and equally they've changed the role hoop which again does need to be defined very early because a lot of teams will be signing off their monocoque around this point of the year ready to start uh, construction for next season. Yeah um, just on just on that subject do you see that purely as increasing the the tonnage of the test or do you think it'll be that'll have other implications in terms of the, the survival cell in general and they'll need to spread out the load more perhaps I don't know if that makes sense yeah it, it's interesting we haven't had the full report but I think what's clear is that it, it was the monocoque that failed and not the roll hoop itself it's where um, it basically the, the, the whole roll hoop and its bonding came away from a, a skin of carbon fiber on the monocoque I think whatever happens for 2023 will only be a quick fix I think that entire survival cell area does need you know quite a lot of rationalization and rethinking because it's kind of grown in incrementally almost since 1994 when a lot of these regulations first came in all the way through up till the introduction of HAO last year so yeah I think there will be um, an increase in the load test on the roll hoop I think that will potentially also mean a change of the direction of the load uh, mm. to reflect what happened in the uh, Guan Yu accident uh, yeah. But I think there does need to be equally a couple of other things. Maybe because it was a, a sudden impact rather than an increasing load, which is what the load test does, maybe there needs to be more emphasis on the uh, uh, load case models, which the, F the teams then give to the FIA to say that, you know, this will meet that force test, but equally in a sudden impact, it will show you that, you know, our calculations, how it would cope with suddenly hitting the circuit, which they do have to do already, but maybe that just needs to be reworded. And potentially also the uh, amount of contact area of the roll structure with the monocoque may be defined as part of that, because again, that's one of the fundamental issues which kind of caused the problem in that accident and isn't lit purely related to the blade design that um, the Alfa Romeo runs, but also, you know, narrow structures like Mercedes use or the, the wide-legged versions, which most other teams use, I think all of them could be susceptible to sudden high loads like we saw in that accident uh, causing failures. So yeah. it, it, I think it would be across the board. And mm. but the other factor in actually getting that confirmed so early and why it's so important to the teams is some of the teams were actually thinking about running their monocoques for a second year um, into 2023, which would save them a huge amount of budget. But the, with the, the role structure change and with some other little detail changes, that could be quite difficult for a team to do now. So therefore, they need to budget for that development, that manufacturing to get a brand new monocoque built and tested. Um, I, can, so I, can see a, I can see a lobby on behalf of the teams to the FIA to have the budget cap increased. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think in, certainly the, the, the floor was going to really put a big load on the team's aero programs, but, you know, I think none of the teams would want to skimp on safety for the role structure change. No. But uh, maybe there could be an allowance of you know so many million pounds for the teams to be able to incorporate that actually i hate to say it but maybe even some added weight to the minimum weight limit um to make that possible um mm. reasonably on um just modifying the current um monocoques 
Thoughts on a more accurate sensor for quantifying aerodynamic oscillation? <laughs> yeah, I actually had um, a discussion on Twitter about this this morning. Uh, so, obviously, the cars have got lots of sensors. Um, most of the sensors on the cars are the team's own. But then you have FIA sensors, which have to be homologated, which means every team must run a very specific sensor. Now, the safety data recorder that sits inside the cockpit, which is kind of like your black box data recorder for accidents and enforcing various regulations, uh, it already exists. But obviously, that was a sensor designed, so it's a, like a three-axis accelerometer, so it measures forces in all three directions. That will work great for accidents where you're getting you know, a sudden 60G uh, impact, but it doesn't really cope with this kind of 6 hertz, 5 6G uh, acceleration that these cars are getting from porpoising. So they do need maybe to have a porpoising sensor, uh, uh, which needs to be agreed uh, by the FIA, mm. and then the, the, how it's mounted, where it's mounted, should be agreed um, and set out. Not a big piece of work for either the FIA or the teams in terms of integrating that and getting that out into the regulations, not a big budget change. But again, it, I think it just goes to show how serious the FAI are at, at making sure that the drivers aren't being shaken unduly by the boxing and the bouncing because yeah. it is potentially, you know, but like concussion and other sports, that you could have some kind of repetitive injury that could lead to the driver's health suffering in years to come. So I think, again, that's all very good common sense stuff from the FIA. There's yeah. nothing to be critical of there at all. No.